So we are live. So welcome back, everybody. We made it to week eight in the semester, right? Halfway. I don't know how you did it. We don't know how we did it, but we made it somehow. Uh, we put one foot in front of the other and we're here. Um, so I know everyone's probably super excited for spring break next week. I know I'd still be working on stuff, but it's just nice to not have to do school stuff to turn in. I'm sure all of you are excited for that. So before we get to go on spring break, right, we got to end the week off with a bang. And so that's why we have our amazing company info session tonight. So tonight we have an awesome session um, from one of our uh, MIS alums. So he did both of our, our undergraduate MIS and our graduate MSITM. So he was in that accelerated program that we talk about all the time. Um, he's come in and spoken at MISA you know, it's, it's been longer than three years, but <laughs> it's been since the early days when I first came in uh, for MISA in terms of uh, this role as faculty advisor. Uh, so he's been great. He has also one of his fellow colleagues here that's going to talk a little bit about uh, that background. Um, but the reason this speaker is great is because not only has he hired a, a few of our MIS students, um, he's someone that really truly you know, we, we've worked with so many companies that sometimes you have some representatives that are there that care, but they don't really care that much. They care just because they want to get somebody in a role, which is fine. Um, but this particular speaker, like he cares beyond in terms of wanting to make you a better person as a whole, grow you not just in your professional, but also in your educational field, and really just um, help you become an overall good person. And so that's why we are very happy uh, for that. So I want to meet that guy. Who's that guy? <laughs> so without any uh, further ado, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to blow too much smoke in the air, right? Uh, can we give a nice virtual uh, Misa round of applause uh, for Bruno and then also for Cedric as well from Citrus? So I'll turn my mic off so that way. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thanks everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? See me okay? Nice. I see some head nods. Very cool. All right. Look, I am not the first time around speaker, so I will use this as um, as an avenue to be very candid. So I hope that this session is something that not many of you may not be you know used to. Um, I don't want to do a PowerPoint just to do it. I want to make sure that you guys get some value out of this. So um, feel free to ask any questions or interrupt me or Cedric when we speak, because this at the end of the day, this session is for you. Right. So um, let me start showing my screen and we get then we can get started. And let me know. Let me know if you can see my screen. OK, just give me a, a head nod there. Uh, yeah, it's showing up right now. Very cool. All right. So let me. Okay, good. I can't see everyone. So let me see if I can do. Yeah, let me see if this works. Okay. All right, sorry about that. I'd like to at least see some of you guys for me to be able to. There we go. I think this is good. All right, are you guys excited? Are you guys ready? I'm excited. The only thing with um, technology is that I, I really miss being there, um, and I, you know, not feeling the, the the feedback from the room is is very challenging to any presenter. So you know, give me some energy if you guys agree, if you guys disagree, if you guys want to ask a question, like please make this as um, interactive as we possibly can. Um, so in the way of introduction, my name is Bruno. Like Dr. Sweet said, I am an FA, FAU alum. I've been at Citrix for close to 10 years now. I've done numerous roles and I started in, in Renewals, which is a, the team that I currently manage today. Um, I'll pass it over to Cedric for him to introduce himself and then we'll, we'll get started. Hey guys, my name is Cedric. By the way, can you hear me fine? Yeah, all right, cool. My name is Cedric. I'm a uh, corporate account manager at, uh, at Citrix, which I just I just got the, the promotion, just signed the offer pretty recently. But I, um, 
I started at Citrix in Renault as well, actually the same job that Bruno had. And um, it was really interesting to, to kind of grow within Citrix for the past three years within uh, Bruno's leadership. Learned a lot and I hope to kind of showcase if you guys have any questions about ca career, about Citrix, want to make sure that we, we shed some light there to, to see how, how, how your future could look like. Awesome. Very cool. And I think you touched on a good point, right? The part of the reason why we come out and, and I take this very seriously is because, um, it, you know, the, the work, um, the workplace is very different than the classroom, right? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of skills that you're going to learn in the classroom that will translate into your, into your career life. And hopefully I can share some of those things tonight so you can start doubling down on if your goal is to land a, a, a job in IT in a, in a Fortune 500 company, which I think it's, it would be a pretty good start for, for anyone in IT. Um, again, this is, um, hold on, uh, let me see. There we go. Cool. So again, this is not my first time here. So I want to say thank you to everyone. I don't know if you guys can, if anyone on the picture is still around, I think that would be pretty awesome. But I don't know if, um, if there's any people there that see themselves on the picture. But um, I just want to say thank you for everyone. Thanks, Dr. Sweet, for trusting me with this opportunity. I think this is um, uh, a long time coming partnership. So I appreciate that. Maybe I'm missing something. Why are they all making the same symbol with their hands? That's the go owl sign. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so so Cedric gave it away. He's not a fellow alum, but you know, we'll, we'll let him pass for tonight. All right, look, so I, I wanna get started to telling you a little bit about Citrix, right? So Citrix is a, a, a local company, right? We're headquartered right here in Fort Lauderdale. So for all of you that are not looking to move um, from Florida, this is a very good opportunity because it is a very strong, very solid company that has been around for many, many years. And one thing that I am passionate about Citrix is that we are extremely relevant in today's world. Even though our mission statement is from 1998, uh, it still sounds true today. Right, people need access to their data, to their applications, and to their desktops anywhere they need to work or access their personal files. So, being able to provide that access is really what makes us stand out. And, you know, if I was to give an example, every time I go to a doctor's office without fail, I look on their screen, on their laptop, or on their thin client, and I always see the Citrix logo because it is something that is very real in, the, in today's marketplace, especially around healthcare. So I will challenge you guys, next time you go to the doctor's office, see on their screen, and I, I bet you it's going to be a Citrix logo on the bottom of that screen. So, you know, part of the reason why I really love Citrix is that we're relevant, um, we are a, I, I, I like to say that we are a huge company with a startup soul, right? So we are present in over 100, 100 countries. We have almost 500,000 customers by now. And our goal, our big hairy goal is to have over 1 billion people, 1 billion devices connected through Citrix. And we are well on our way to hit that goal. Um, and these numbers are from 2019, so they're a little bit dated, but you can see that how strong our, our portfolio is and how, how relevant we are in today's market. Now, speaking of the market, I think one of the things that I want everybody to take out of this session is how things have changed over time. Obviously, everybody's super aware of, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic and all that that meant for everyone, right? So from working remotely to not being able to um, go to an office or have certain restrictions, uh, walking in stores with masks, we all are very familiar with that. But if we were to take 
things a little bit ago and we look at um, how things were done, especially around in, in the 90s, uh, the things that we have today did not exist, right? And, and like, if you think about it, um, you know, the ear escapes me, but the iPhone hasn't been around for, for all that long, right? So the fact that you can easily today load up anything on your on your cloud and be able to have access to your photos and your pictures and, and all of your contacts. That's that's stuff that's today, right? In the past, it wasn't always like that. So in in the 90s, when companies had to spin up an environment, or let's say they had uh, 20, 30, 50 workers that they needed to stand up, uh, a uh, an admin would have to go to each computer and configure each one of those individually. So what Citrix ended up doing was they developed a proprietary protocol called the ICA protocol. And we were able to really change how people worked and how admins actually provision these uh, environments. So through Citrix, customers can easily create one golden image or one unified workspace. And through Citrix, we will then allow remote access for, for those applications and for those desktops. So that in itself was an amazing um, advent in, in the IT industry. So when, when we look back at, at 91 and how things shifted, uh, today, things have uh, really moved to a more um, security-faced uh, approach. What that means is that customers now are, are, are more concerned with security and how things are actually stored. Uh, there's a lot of privacy concerns in, in the IT world. So um, Citrix really pivoted to things that, that are not only fully secure, but able to give the mobility that the customers need today. So um, if we fast forward to, to 2013 and 2017, we really saw a, a shift from customers not necessarily wanting to be tethered to a workplace. For example, you know, today it's very common that people are working remotely, but you know, five, six years ago, I, I would have never thought that I would be working from home. I guarantee you, I always thought I would be in an office and, you know, I'd go in at 8.30, leave at 5.30 and, and call it a day. But people today, they, they need flexibility, right? If you're able to do your work from the comfort of your home and you're able to be productive, that is the type of ask, that is the type of um, work style that people are preferring today. Right. So and that led us to the creation of the, the workspace. So Citrix envisioned a, a tool called um, Citrix Workspace that essentially guided your work and gave you all the tools and all the files and all the desktops that you need to um, necessarily do your your day to day work. And um, that is what really transitioned us from a app delivery company to a more of a holistic workspace delivery uh, type of provider. Any questions so far? I know it's kind of hard to do it remotely, but any questions so far? Okay, cool. So I will cover this next one and I'll pass it over to Cedric. So now when we think about the works, works, workspace, um, there's, there's several things that, that, that a person needs to complete their job, right? They need, they need data, they need access to um, tools and, and applications, and they're able to have, and they need to have a, a, a good experience when they access those things, especially if it's something done remotely. So what Citrix is able to do now with all that we've learned through the, um, the learnings over the years, we were able to create a solution that Cedric is gonna cover that really touches on three pillars. And those are pillars that are very important to um, today's IT environment. And, and this is important for, for everyone in this room because as you shift from the classroom to a workplace, you need to understand why companies 
why the IT organization within companies act the way they act, right? So for example, um, if you talk to a, a CIO today, if you talk to a CEO today, folks that are at the high level, they are worried about employees' productivity. They want to know that their employees are actually able to work effectively. And I don't know if you're aware, but uh, human capital, right, people, is the most expensive asset that a company has, right? So think about the, the millions of dollars that companies pay on salary every month, every week. They want to make sure that they get return for that investment. Right, so the, the C-level, the C-suite as we call it, they're always concerned about employee productivity. And Citrix touches on that specifically with our new offering that Cedric is gonna cover. The next piece that is very important that I touched on is security, right? Uh, you know, how often do we go on the news and we see that there was, a, there was an outage or there was a break and, and a company is being held uh, hostage because of a, a failed uh, security attempt. So um, even more so now, right? Because people are not necessarily working from the office. You need a robust solution that actually is able to um, provide your IT organization with security. And the last piece, which is tied to, to cloud, and, and I feel like you guys by now understand the cloud concept, uh, essentially companies are looking to move away from owning hardware, right? And when I mean hardware, I mean servers, storage, actually uh, infrastructure to house all of those things. Companies don't necessarily want to be in the business of managing hardware. And when you think about uh, Google Cloud, you think about Microsoft Azure or um, Amazon Web Services, the, these companies are able to partner with these corporations and they're able to provide a, a platform for them to develop their IT infrastructure, being uh, specific applications, being data, or even virtual desktops. And that's where Citrix comes in. Right, because for example, if you have all of those workloads in the cloud, you need to have a provider to be able to deliver those workloads to your endpoint, right? To your laptop, to your phone, through your, you know, in the office or at the house. So I'm gonna pass it over to Cedric and he's gonna touch a little bit more on, on what that looks like from, from a Citrix standpoint. Take it away, Cedric. All right, uh, thanks. Um, just to kind of reinforce what, what Bruno was saying, it, the, the, the message that we started when, when Citrix was created is very similar to, to, to what the landscape is today, which, which is all about flexibility, right? We wanna be able to uh, make sure that employees from, from companies are, uh, are work at, at their, the best way, let's put it that way. The way to do that is to make sure that when you're working, whenever you want access to a file, access to an application, or even a desktop, you want it to be at a good speed, at a good performance. I mean, I'm sure you guys know the, the frustration of you, you could be studying something, you're trying to open a, a file, it, it either it freezes on you, or it takes 15 seconds to do anything. The mouse freezes. It's 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 a pain. I personally hate it. Sometimes I pull I, I pull my hair out of my hair, which is why you see these holes right here. <laughs> um, but but the message st stayed the same, right? C uh, Citrix and, and a lot of other companies they they they've come to the realization that um, productivity from employees it's almost like the first domino that you need to be focused on because once you really put the focus on productivity from employees, it ends up increasing revenue for the company as a whole and enables companies to lower their costs for, for anything really. For, for example, right now, uh, because a lot of companies have their uh, employees working from home, they probably save you a lot of money on leases. They maybe, not, they maybe don't need as many buildings as they used to have. Um, so it's the, the message is the same, right? Is to be able to deliver. Uh, Citrix is the only company that deliver uh, apps and data to, to the employees securely while also increasing uh, uh, employee productivity. Now that's the main message kind of like 
from Citrix as a, if you were to condense it as much as you can, as you could, what does that mean? And I'll give you an example. Um, before Citrix, I used to work for a, a, a company that sold drugs to hospitals uh, around the US. And one of the frustration, or even you could call it paranoia from the, the CEO of the company was that it would get hacked. That because you have you have very sensitive information. We're talking about healthcare. You're talking about like patient information, and they wanted they wanted to really really protect that. What ends up happening is that they started implementing a lot of uh, policies uh, in order to make sure they wouldn't get hacked. So there was a lot of features that was actually blocked from employees. They couldn't you couldn't copy. You could barely send an email. Even if you want to send an email to somebody, you had like a, a lot of um a, a lot of issues trying to to say specific words or trying to copy things or try to attach things. And you couldn't really do the work the best way you could. And so that ends up impacting uh 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 companies right one of the things that that we see a lot is uh security and experience are supposedly go go against each other right you, the more security you increase the lower the experience for the employees and the higher the experience the the the, the more the less of security citrix is the only company that provides both at the same at the same level which is why citrix is uh is relevant especially today uh in today's day and age which goes back to the same message again delivering apps and data securely while also increasing uh, employee productivity on any location, any device, anywhere. Um, that's that's actually so, so some statistics that, that, that I like to see. Citrix is the, the big and the leader and biggest provider of virtual clients computing, right? We're uh, we're number one in the in the uh, in the market. And also that's something else that's part of our portfolio is also what we call the application delivery controller which is more related to workloads in the back ends for the companies uh companies like to to have flexibility on right um because the landscape one thing that i like about uh working in it which i think you guys are in a in a good route in the in terms of area to focus on i'm typically a guy that gets bored pretty fast and in IT, you don't get bored. Why? Because things change at the speed of light. You think you're doing something uh, that's relevant today. Guess what? People are looking for different things because things change, right? Um, we used to put a lot of a lot of focus on on uh, on delivering a a a massive solution to everybody, and then we realized then we, the market was demanding simplicity, simplicity and flexibility. How do we, how do we deploy uh, virtual clients or virtual client computing for, for people? Very simple, very simple, very cheaply, easy, fast, so that wherever they are, whether they're at home, whether they're in the office or they're traveling, they can access anything that they need at any time, right? Which is what, what, I, what I really like about the, the, this whole change. Um, so- Frederick. Yeah. Real quick, I think um, I have an example, and I, I don't know if maybe Dr. Sweet will remember, but in the when I was around as a student, I remember that um, it was very challenging to navigate the, the school's website, and I, was, I would always get frustrated, and I couldn't get the stuff that I needed. So when Cedric talks about uh, virtual client computing and, and certain solutions that, that we provide access to, that's similar to what you have today. For example, if you are if you go on a website and you try to make a purchase or if you go to the school's website and you try to launch a program and you can't, uh, those, are the certain, those are the types of things that, that, that create a bad employee experience. And in today's job market, there's two things that are very important employee experience and customer experience. The two go hand in hand because if you know, um, if you think about it, I am Citrix number one customer, right? Because I am using it. And if I don't have a good experience, how am I gonna go to my customers and share you know, the, the advantages of, of working through Citrix and having uh, all my data is available on my fingertips? So uh, I just wanted to make that touch because um, a lot of times we talk about like high level with companies, but really everybody is, is, is actually uh, exposed 
to, to certain things like that. Yeah, what, what, what I like to use as an analogy is Citrix does what for apps and, uh, and data, the same thing that Amazon does for products. That's right? a very good point. Yeah, Amazon doesn't really create products. They just deliver it to you in the most efficient way possible, right? The most efficient way that they think they can deliver it to you. Citrus does the same thing for applications and data, which is what I really, really enjoy about the, the company. Um, I want to focus a bit more on the, the hybrid workforce. Um, a lot of companies, they have different, different approaches, different policies. Uh, I just read that recently that uh, Google wants all, the, all their employees that live in Silicon Valley to work from the office, and that's like a demand. Other companies are saying, hey, you could work from home uh, uh, until the end of time if you choose to. And um, you would think, oh, that's all good and great. But for somebody like uh, hackers, it's a dream. It's a paradise because it creates so many vulnerabilities that they can um, – they can take advantage of, right? And so, so something that we, we see is, is a, a, a lot of the solutions, a lot of the demand of the market is changing based on the hybrid workforce that we find today. Uh, I'm sure you guys will probably be looking for jobs knowing one thing you're gonna ask the hiring manager, for example, is, hey, how flexible are you with, your, with uh, working from home? And I'm sure that will most likely impact your decision. You guys are coming into the into the workforce where that's going to be one of your concerns, which didn't occur for me, right? When uh, <laughs> when Bruno hired me, he's like, "You're going to be here forever, my friend, in this office." <laughs> um, but that that's that's what what that's what people are looking for, right? Uh, employees, they're looking for experience. They're looking for flexibility, and that's the same thing for customers, right? Which is kind of a funny thing if you think about it. Um, then he talks about like how 74% of enterprises are, are, are getting out of VPNs to go into zero trust network. I, I won't get into that, but basically the gist of it is, as I explained, because there's so many vulnerabilities created from the hybrid workforce that a lot of very high level executives from most companies, uh, they have security as, as, as top of mind for them, right? How do they... How do they stop outages? How do they protect themselves against hackers? Because sometimes you, you don't realize how important that is. And, and I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. I had a customer, they, I was talking to them, and they had an outage last year. Every minute that their environment was down, they were losing almost half a million dollars. That's per minute. So if they're out for like half an hour, that's 50 million just thrown out, right? To a company that's massive, that's huge losses, right? So sometimes companies would go above and beyond just to make sure that they don't suffer any outages, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. And uh, that, that's basically it. And that is going to be a lot more common in today's world because before the pandemic, a lot of the stuff that we go through today um, actually wasn't wasn't present right so if you think about it previous previous to the pandemic we didn't have a lot of these opportunities to um have all of these remote sessions and be able to you know use the the the, the technology to be able to um give opportunity for people to work in different states and things like that so i i don't believe we're going back Right. I don't believe that the the aftermath of the pandemic is going to allow us to go back to a to a world where we're we're tied to an office building. There's definitely going to be choice. Right. So, look, we're right at five forty five. I know this was a lot to uh, consume, digest. to digest for sure. Um, but if I was to summarize it at, at a high level, what's important for you and what I want you to take away from this is, number one, uh, companies are consistently evolving. And if when you're looking for companies to work, you want to make sure that you find a company that is relevant, that their, that their products or services have a place in, in today's world. 
And you want to work for a company that you're actually excited about what they do. And I'll give you a quick story um, before I move over to you, Dr. Sweet. When I, um, when I was actually going to school, uh, I worked at um, Chase. And the reason, one of the reasons why I went back to school was because a lot of my customers were opening accounts, creating loans, and submitting credit card applications through their mobile device. And I was, I've, I've always been in sales. And if you, in sales, if you, if you make the sale, great. If you don't, then you might want to start looking for another job. So when I started having my customers come to me and say, oh, no, don't worry. I opened the account online. Oh, no, I just got the credit card through the app. I started seeing that I, I was becoming a dinosaur. I was becoming really outdated. So, you know, I just wanted to share that because I ended up having to make a big career shift and I um, moved away from a 10 year career in banking to um, starting fresh as, um, as a renewal rep, which is pretty much the, the entry point um, at Citrix. So look, I, 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 want, I hope that you guys got some value out of this. Uh, I'll pass it over to you, Dr. Sweet, and I'll be here for questions. Thanks so much, Bruno. So, so can we give uh, uh, Bruno and Cedric a, a, a early thank you for the good. good well. <laughs> so I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and stop the recording, and then we'll.